This is a talk on Argo CD plugins as services. Um, my name is Alan Klukas. I'm a software engineer for Pipekit. Um, I get involved in professional services. I'm an Argo workflows maintainer. Um, you're not in the wrong hall. This is a talk about Argo CD though. Um, I, my first uh, experience of Argo was uh, coming into Kubernetes, wanting to do GitOps and getting into Argo CD. Um, and became the co-author of the Argo CD Lovely plugin, um, and hence wanting to talk about a bit about how plugins work in Argo CD and a bit about how I would like them to work, which is uh, as services to make them easier. Let's move on. Uh, so what are plugins, config management plugins specifically? Um, config management plugins are the component in the Argo CD repo server um, that you can plug into to change how it morphs the stuff you have in Git into Kubernetes YAML. If you were in this room about two hours ago, um, you would have been told that this was a really bad idea. So um, the talk on the rendered manifest pattern is basically anti using plugins or config management plugins in most circumstances. So what can we do? You probably all heard of Helm, uh, used Helm, hopefully. Um, Helm is a, a, a thing that morphs something that's not quite Kubernetes YAML into Kubernetes YAML. Um, and you may well be using that in Argo CD. That's not actually a config management plugin in most normal uses of it, because it's built in to Argo CD. Um, a completely different type of thing that you might use is Hera. If you've been in any of the workflows talks by Pipekit, they've probably mentioned Hera at some point. Hera is a Python SDK for writing Argo workflows with. And you could write yourself a plugin uh, that morphs Python in your Git repository into Kubernetes YAML. In fact, Argo CD lovely plugin that I talked about earlier can do this for you. Um, when you're using a config management plugin, you can access it directly by name, so you can specify this particular Argo CD application needs to use this particular config management plugin. And it can be a versioned version of that plugin, or it can just use whichever one it finds. You can also ask the repo server to discover plugins, by which me, what that means is each of the plugins in the system will get asked can you handle this particular directory within the, the Git repository that the application consists of? Um, and if it says yes, then that, will be, that plugin will be asked to render the manifest for you. As part of configuring a plugin, you write a YAML file called plugin.yaml. Um, I'm mentioning that here because we're going to talk about it a bit later. So the current mechanism for using plugins in Argo CD is to stick them onto your repo server as a sidecar. Um, this means that you, you've got one pod with the repo server in it, and then for each of the plugins, you've got a sidecar sitting inside the same pod at separate containers. It's nice because they're isolated from each other, and they just they discuss how they're going to do this rendering using a network protocol called gRPC. Um, so that already exists. So the thought was, we've already got a network protocol. Why can't we just take the plugins out of the repo server, find them by looking them up as a service, and then back that with whatever we like? I'm going to suggest mostly you would want to do that with a deployment, but you could back that with anything you like. It could be a stateful set. It could be an external service completely outside of Kubernetes. I don't know why you'd want to be outside of Kubernetes, but that's your call. So given that thought um, and the, the, a problem that I think it will solve by moving things out of the repo server is the problem of plugin installation. So my Agile story is, as a plugin author, I'd like people to be able to play with my plugin easily and uninstall it easily. It's not trivial. The stuff on the right there is the instructions for how to configure a sidecar. Uh, it's not terribly hard, but it's all bundled into one big YAML manifest for a single 
pod with lots of containers in it, it's not entirely apparent, especially if you weren't the person who installed it, how you might uninstall it, or how you might upgrade it, or how you might fix problems with it. Instead, we could have a, a Helm chart. Argo CD Lovely plugin could have a Helm chart. You deploy this, it deploys the service, the deployment, and then you've got Lovely, which is lovely. Um, it could be a customized manifest. It could be whatever you like, but at least it's separated. It can be installed as a separate Argo CD application in that case. And hopefully this would sort of improve the understandability of plugins within Argo CD um, because manually installing sidecars is not a common pattern within Kubernetes in my experience. Um, installing Helm charts and customized things, yeah, we do that all the time. It could also help with plugin development. Um, Kubernetes and Argo are sort of Lego ecosystems. They're building blocks on which you build more great stuff. Um, and as Argo in general has gotten bigger, more complex, it's harder for the maintainers to maintain all of the cool things that people would like to do within the Argo ecosystem. People keep wanting to add more stuff and plugins in general across the ecosystem, plugins within workflows, plugins within CD, uh, plugins within rollouts are all things that are being, are being used to take that out of the core of the system and allow you to develop things that do the particular thing you want to do. And it's currently sort of hard. You have to have admin rights in order to put sidecars onto your repo server. It's not necessarily a problem because you might just do that locally. Um, but your iteration is slow. You're continually restarting your repo server. Um, again, you can get around that without, you can not do that. Um, but the normal pattern for development of, of these things would be a sort of restart within a, 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 um, a container just to pull in the latest version of what you've written. Um, I'm going to go over a few downsides of this model. Uh, first, you're going to have to transfer your repository from the repo server to the plugin. This happens every time you want to render it because it's got to have a copy of the plugin. Um, large repos aren't particularly recommended for Argo CD anyway, but previously it would be doing this between two containers within a pod, pretty rapid. Um, this will be slower. It's going across probably real network between two nodes in your cluster. And discovery is identical. It has to transfer the repo between it, the repo server and the plugin in order to, for discovery to do its job. So it's going to be slower too. Um, and the repo server is really nice from a Kubernetes security point of view. It has no access to Kubernetes, but we are now saying we're going to need to give it read access to services in order for it to discover stuff. I think the upsides make up for this. We're not going to remove um, sidecar plugins. Um, they can live alongside each other. So um, the upsides, you can scale these things independently. Um, you could have, if, you, if you're only using like a plugin for 1% of your services, or your applications, sorry, um, you might only need one copy of your plugin, but if you've got 10 repo servers, it's going to be stuck onto all 10 of the repo servers. Um, maybe you get burst load on that plugin. You can use a horizontal pod autoscaler for that. If you've got lots of plugins in your system, I don't know if this is an actual use case where people do have hundreds of plugins, but you're having to allocate them, jam them onto the side of every repo server. Um, this scaling problem, this, this should help with scaling and should help in a way with performance because you could have one small repo server and lots of plugins running alongside them. Running plugins on spot nodes becomes more viable in most cases and you've separated out your life cycles of the plugin and the repo server. If you upgrade the repo server at the moment, it takes everything down, takes everything up. That's going to still happen. But if you upgrade your plugin at the moment, you'd have to take your repo server down to do it, whereas they can do a nice rolling deployment. Um, if you've got them separated. Um, going back to the understandability point, um, it's more normal. Um, people understand a deployment. They understand putting metrics on a deployment. They understand monitoring it on, a, on, on that. And therefore, you know, the Helm chart could have a service monitor as 
the Prometheus Service Monitor, part of it, and then you can monitor it. Um, a problem I've hit in, in re reality is uh, GitHub um, container registry being down. Um, Argo is hosted on key, K, Quay, Quay, whatever you want to call it if you're American enough. Um, and we couldn't restart the repo server because GHCR was down. Um, they're separate, so might be better. And we've gone over a bit about plugins uh, being developed. You've got separation of concerns. It's easier to understand what's going on. You could give your plugins different service accounts. You can't do that within a single container. You could give it some very naughty service accounts permissions and do very evil things. You could make yourself a stateful plugin. Don't come and talk to me when you're crying about all of that stuff, but you can do things and it's safer um, if you're doing it separated from the repo server. So Lovely, or I guess CD Lovely plugin, um, was originally conceived um, when we got a bit upset about Helm and Customize not working very well together. It was originally conceived as a sort of do what you hope would happen with this bunch of stuff in a repository. Um, it's grown to be a bit of a Unix pipe, joining together various transformations. So you can pipe um, the output of Helm into Customize. You can then pipe that through SED if you're so inclined or some other system to pull secrets in, which is again a frowned upon pattern, but you can do it, so it's great. Um, this is where not having my laptop's gonna pull us down a little bit, because I'm not gonna be able to demo some of this stuff, which I was hoping to do, so. In the plugin, .yaml, you define the name of your plugin, you define the commands you're gonna run, and you define what parameters that plugin takes. In order to turn a plugin from a normal plugin into a, a, a plugin as a service, you just need to tell it that you want to start listening on a, a port. Um, that says, I'm going to start listening on port 8080. You're running that in a deployment now, and it's listening on port 8080 for gRPC requests. The um, plugins run as the server component of gRPC. So the repo server will discover your service. The service has a label on it. Again, demo's broken, can't show you. Um, and then it can discover all the services with the label that say, I'm an Argo CD plugin, and it will query them about what capabilities they're gonna have. Um, and it does so using a secret to ensure that they're all authenticated. And yeah, um, if you could all cross your fingers, I'm still not gonna be able to see the demo. Uh, <laughs> A, um, I decided to try this out on somebody else's plugin that I didn't change. So here is a plugin that does um, Helm file manipulation. If you haven't come across Helm file, Helm file is a sort of super Helm chart. Um, if you don't like their plugin, Lovely does it as well. Um, <laughs> I'm not trying to sell Lovely here, but it is lovely. Um, you add the listen address into the plugin.yaml and you have to somehow get the config management plugin server component from Argo CD into the image that you're going to run. Here I'm copying it in. You could volume mount it. That's how it works in a sidecar system. But that's the entire Docker file to convert somebody else's plugin into one that works as a service from a sidecar. Um, this stuff is all in a pull request. Um, that number up there tells you where it is. Um, so if you'd like to get involved, shout at me, tell me how bad my code is. That's where you can find it. Um, we could then go on to separate out Helm, customize JSONet, the built-in capabilities of Argo CD repo server into separate plugins. They'd be a core part, but separate, running separately. Um, this feels like a potential future path. Um, Lovely is written in Go, uh, so I would quite like to separate out the CMP server component so that I can just build a single Go binary. Then the, uh, so then there'll be a Go package. You could start developing plug it, Golang, package it, Golang plugins for Argo CD, knowing that most of your stuff is going to work 
sort of more out of the box because there would be just a pattern for doing it. Um, I mentioned before, I work for PipeKit. Um, we're Argo experts and maintainers, and uh, we've got contributors to both workflows and Helm charts, and now me doing some CD stuff. Um, we make a control plane for workflows, uh, so come and talk to us on booth E34 about anything we've talked about today or workflows. <laughs> and we run some regular office hours where we talk about infrastructure stuff or sometimes just the weather and chairs. Um, and there's a QR code if you'd like to sign up for office hours. Does anybody have any questions? Thank <laughs> you.